start. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's great getting to have you on the program ahead of Octagon 60. Going to be checking that out on September the 7th. And yeah, just what a fight you have against Mataos Cowhoat and yes. everything like that. Should be a great welterweight fight. And thanks so much for appearing on Bouts Talking Bouts. I've got Nicholas Stoltz on the show. And yeah, no, appreciate you making the time, man. Like I said. Yes. Thank you for having me. And then um, just have a great talk about everything. And like you said, it's going to be a very good worldwide fight. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, getting to, you know, compete in Oberhausen as well. I mean, I imagine that's, you know, a big moment for you and stuff like that. Just getting to, you know, compete there and everything like that. Just, yeah, no, it would seem like a cool, I guess, component to the whole situation too. Yes, yes, yes. It's great. It's just great competing in Germany in general. And then it's great to see the fans have like family and everyone around like who's supporting always. So it's cool. It's good. Yeah. And I feel like you've always gotten that, I guess, respect over the years too, just in terms of really putting German MMA on your shoulders in a big way. And it seems like Octagon is doing such great things. So it seems like a perfect storm, all things considered, a lot of factors at play there. Yes, yes, yes. They doing good. Like it is like, I would say it's like more the guys who have like more knowledge about the scene. They would say like oh, I'm the one who puts like German MMA on the shoulders, but it was such a tough run internationally. So I kind of like get it that I kind of like fall down, you know, the last couple of years because of my losses. But um, Octagon is doing great. They promote me well. I had a great knockout for my comeback fight in front of twenty thousand people, and then now we're just gonna get the second knockout, and then we're gonna see what's next. Yeah, I mean, your opponent has like a pretty well-regarded Muay Thai resume and stuff like that. So, I mean, you were talking yes. about securing the knockout and everything like that. Like, I feel like if you were to, I guess, generate a similar outcome here, that would be a good feather in the cap, considering, like I said, his Muay Thai pedigree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he has tons of Muay Thai fights, a lot of kickboxing fights, and also a bunch of MMA fights. And he's considered like a good striker, like a stand-up guy. And I'm not sure if I had like a considered striker in my last couple of fights you know it was like always more wrestling based guys you know or people who are like more into like yeah clinching and do heavy wrestling and so this guy is like more of a striker so we will see yeah it seems like you found a good home at welterweight as well like it doesn't seem like you're wanting to you know journey in that lightweight direction so much like the foreseeable future would be at 170 pounds yeah, definitely, definitely. I can't do, I can't make 155 anymore. Like, maybe we can, but it's just too much of, it's way too much of dietitian and it's way of much like taking away, I don't know, life <laughs> in a general way, you know, like it's, it's weird, you know, it's this time for welterweight, I need to be in camp for like 10 weeks and I need to be on my diet for like eight weeks or maybe seven weeks, you know. And I don't need to be super strict. I always have like one or two calorie days where I can load up and I still be on weight every time I'm going to check my weight. You know, there's like a, a little schedule I follow. So I get on my pinpoint weight tomorrow. And just on Sunday, I had a bunch of carbs and big burritos, you know, and like ice cream and stuff. So I can, it's not in one chance that is possible at 155, you know. And 155 is like, you need to be prepared for the preparation. You need to be on a certain way then to make the weight in eight weeks, you know? So it's it's way too hard and it's definitely not worth it. Yeah, it's almost like an additional layer to the whole thing because you're preparing for the fights and focused on improving your technique yes. and you know seeing what your opponent does, etc. But then the weight cut on top of it. And I imagine there's a certain additional level of I guess just energy and like vitality and stuff like that that you probably have fighting at 170 as compared to like more strenuous lightweight cuts and stuff like that yes 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 for sure for sure yeah and it seems good too because I think from some interviews that I was seeing you were kind of referencing your contest that you had earlier this year in March and we're kind of saying that there were a few elements that didn't seem like they were kind of on point and stuff like that. But it seems like with your training that from what I understand has been in both Cyprus and the U S over the last few weeks, it would seem like this would kind of give you a chance to, I guess, really bounce back and stuff like that. Like maybe things are more on point this time out and in 
I guess, solid alignment, I guess. Yeah, it was my last camp for the last fight was pretty tough. I was not really tough in like um training wise, you know, training was kind of good, but there was so much stuff to deal personally. And like the move, like our move to Cyprus was right in between the preparation because we had to move and um one of my dogs got very badly sick and uh had to fight with him like the fucking sickness for like two years and then it came to the final like the real final um surgery was on the friday before the like not the friday friday on weigh-ins but the friday the week before the fight so it was like one week out of the weigh-ins this where was the final surgery so it was like more like they will see if he's going to make it or not so i really didn't know if i'm going to collect like i'm going to pick up my dog the next day so I did not sleep this whole weekend, you know, then I could pick him up like very late in the Saturday and I could not sleep till Sunday, you know, I was with him, I had him just in my arms this whole night and everyone knows how much of a dog human I am, you know, I just love dogs, they just great, great and um, I have him for seven years, he's been me too thick and thin, so I was like, okay, I have to take care of him and then I remember when it was Monday, I was like, fuck, it's just like fight week, you know, and then on Monday, I had to bring him again to the hospital because one of his scars opened up. So they had to do again stuff on him, you know, and then I could pick him up on Wednesday. So which was like the Wednesday for the fight. And then on Wednesday, I picked him up and then drove by myself to Stuttgart, you know, which is also not like super good, you know, to drive all this way. You're going to, you know, you save water in your in your legs and everything. You need to move a little bit. You need someone who drives you that you can just lay and, you know, yeah, I don't know, just put your legs up and stuff. Like, just small things, you know, very small details, which went totally wrong in the fight week. And then also separated now with my old team because I was not really feeling comfortable anymore going into this fight with my old team, you know. It's like you said, a lot of stuff on my shoulder. I do everything by my own. I plan everything by my own. There's not much of a big team. I have a. I had a good striking coach. He was always with me. But this is like, yeah, it's like the only thing. And when it comes to weight cuts, I plan everything by myself because I was the one who was traveling around the world, getting all the knowledge, and I did it quite by myself. You know, I wasn't about it. I had like my team with me that the team gains knowledge as well. You know, I can say some. But as soon as you come into fight where you don't want to explain anything, you know, you just make the plan and say, let's follow this plan, you know. So it's like, yeah, not everything went well. And then the fight itself was kind of, I don't know, never really watched it, you know. I don't really watch it when I lose. And I, and I feel like I just watch let, let it watch my coaches. I let it watch all my coaches in the US and they tell me what I did wrong, you know. And as soon as I hear it, I can know, you know, because I knew what I did wrong in this fight, you know. So for this fight, it's going to be bounce back. It's a good opponent. It's a good show. I had a good training camp. Like you said, I was training in Cyprus. I did all my conditioning, all my, we, we call it like level one cardio. I did it all um, in Cyprus. It was a lot of cycling, a lot of swimming, a lot of running, um, a lot of lifting. And then after four weeks, I went to the US for the last four weeks, which was only sparring and drilling and hitting pets and yeah so it was a very good camp I re this was like one of the camps i really enjoyed because it was just fun yeah and i mean i guess just even addressing the situation with your dog like i mean i'm glad your dog is still doing well yeah, and he's i good. mean yeah that's awesome man i mean that's what's most important that can definitely be such a weight like when your you know animal that you love is in such a you know, dicey situation. But, you know, like I said, glad things panned out. And I guess to your point of, I guess, just like your prior space where it was almost like you were the guy going out accruing all this knowledge. And I mean, at the same time, there is something to be said about giving it to these other fighters. It would seem like being at spaces like Extreme Couture. And I understand you also have a past with Syndicate MMA. Like I would feel like working at spaces like that kind of I guess just allow you to even like elevate your level just because 100%. I feel like such elite fighters are out of those spaces. Yeah. Yes. hundred percent. You can not just like let yourself fall into the arms of the coaches because they know what they're doing. They like all they're doing, you know, like for 
a lot of people, especially in the German MMA scene and also a lot of coaches, they think when they show up once a day and they tell you what to do, you know, and you do it, they really consider that as hardworking coaches, you know. But then you come to like gyms like Extreme Couture and then you see a head coach who earned already millions through his fighters and is there from 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. You really know that he's really hardworking, you know, because he's there for every single one of the fighters. And I had like this relationship with my previous coaches here in my old town where it was like, oh, look, I'm here for you. Like, yeah, you're here for me five hours a week, you know, like we train like an hour and a half in the evening and that's it, you know, like. The, like all the rest I do by myself I go to my own grappling sessions and wrestling sessions and stuff you know so I just don't like when like coaches put themselves so much above uh, fighters which is I think a lot of happening in Germany they think they are just way too good for what they actually know my opinion you know Um. so I really enjoyed it to be an extreme I worked with Maki he is like a former UFC fighter by himself um, he's just a great coach you know and he's like He's there, like he made me. He made me feel good training four hours in the morning. You know, it was not like I had to go and was like, "Fuck, I need to train four hours today." No, I never knew that. You know, it was like, "Okay, we're gonna drill ten a.m. and we're gonna do fight preparation training at 12. So everything else is up to you. And then we drill till eleven. But eleven is showing up a bit big bunch of group with all the Bellator and MMA fighters, UFC fighters and all these guys, they show up for a grappling session and you just pick like five more grappling sessions, like grappling rounds. Then it's already 12. Then he's coming and say like, okay, now we do fight preparation. I still feel good. You know, I load up with my fluids, my drinks, hydration, blah, 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 eat my banana. And I go straight into my kind of like third session already, you know, and he's feeling me, make me feel good, you know, and then he does, all the stretching with me, he's sitting in with me in the ice tub, you know, like he's helping me going through this, you know, and after like, when when I finish at two, there's another client coming in who is he working with pets because there's still other fighters fighting on other shows on other dates on other, you know, shows and cities and they have different schedules. So I'm tired, but he's done the same work as me. And he's not tired and he's still going, you know, and I say like, ah, I'm going to go home, I'm going to take a rest, you know, and then I'm going to rest two, three hours and I come back and he does, he's still there, you know, and this gave me so much energy and like motivation to just be there, you know, it's kind of like what I, I needed, you know, I kind of get when like all the coaches saying, I don't do this anymore, you know, I'm 50 years, I don't like, but they are also old, you know, like Maki is not that old, he's the same as, age as me, but there's other coaches who are 50, 55, 60, they are there all day and they don't complain at all and I like that, you know, because people say to me, I should stop complaining because I started a little bit complaining about like all the situation with COVID. You know, I said like, oh, you guys talking about my super bad run in the UFC, but you actually guys know how crazy the world was in this three years I was in the UFC. You actually know that I was not able to train because police took down the fucking training center because it's not allowed to train with more than two people because of COVID spread, you know? And it was not allowed to traveling. It was not allowed to do anything, you know? When I was outside, I was an alien, you know? People was in the quarantine and I was outside running and people looked at me that I was an alien. I was like, what the fuck's this guy doing? Why is he risking all our health? And I'm like, whoa, man, I need to prepare for a fight. Like, what should I do? Should I, like... For my fight against Emir, if I was doing five days or six days shadow boxing in a hotel room because it was in a London quarantine, I was in Abu Dhabi quarantine, and people just like they they so quick to forget it. And I fought three rounds with him, you know. And this guy was like close to the top fifteen in the UFC. So sometimes I wish people would just like appreciate it more. But this is like kind of like all so much behind me that I'm like just do all my own stuff now by myself with the new team. I brought in the nice breath coach, which is a new element of training. I've never done this before, you know, like do a lot of breath work, change a lot of things and feel like mentally way more clear, you know, like I already feel like super good, you know, my weight is good now, it's all good. So I feel it's going to be a very good bounce back fight and then people will see, okay, this he's still good, you know, because I think people think that I'm kind of like, it's over now, but it is not, you know, I'm 31. I'm, I think I just going to, I don't know if it's right, but I'll probably reach my body prime in like one or two years. I feel it, you know, I feel like sometimes I feel stronger, you know, I feel different, you know, back then I was eating a lot of shit. Now it's like, 
I don't even want that, you know, I want to be healthy. I, it's like it comes all from the natural source of energy, you know, it's like, I think your body changes, your mind changes so much when you got through all these ages, you know, I'm now I'm like 31. I want to be there for the family. You want to be like a man, you know, like you want to be like providing for people and just changes mindset wise. So I'm really happy to finally compete again and then get on a win streak, like get on a week win streak. That's my goal. Yeah, and I feel like people do forget that for sure. I mean, at one point, like during the pandemic there, training out of your hotel room seemed not entirely uncommon. And then also just essentially like one year gaps between all three of your UFC fights as well. So it seems like the landscape is better, I guess, just to even compete consistently and then have more yes. of like a clear training landscape too, right? Yes, yes, 100%. Yeah. It was all way too, way too difficult to handle, you know, like... People also forget that I'm second fight. They took away my corner one day before the fight. First, like short notice, like on Tuesday, they say, oh, Munir's not going to able to enter the U.S. Okay, we're going to fight Jared Gooden, you know. And then on Wednesday, they come in and say, we need to do another COVID test after the weigh-ins. And we do another COVID test after the weigh-ins. And like all of a sudden, I don't know how this happened. Like up to this day, I really don't know how this would actually possible out of 70 tests my two coaches got COVID and I'm not I'm in the same room with them weeks you know I was like okay and then both coaches got COVID and that was actually the first time I've met with John Wood who was like from syndicate and said like hey I'm probably a like probably the first and only fighter in the UC who goes out with a corner who just goes out by himself you know and I was a like I was ready to do it I was like it's not like any chance that they're gonna take this fight away from me just because the corner is like not ready because of COVID you know like because both of them weren't sick both of them felt fine you know it was just like it was just weird and then okay and then he said, no, I'm going to coach you. You know, it's all good. I got you, you know, because I still had, I, he had Sean Strickland on this fight, you know, so on this fight card. So he was like, okay, I'm going to call him anyway. So I'll be there anyway. So I'm going to go out with you. I was like, okay, I'm going to appreciate that. But like all these small things, you know, have been so weird, weird. But um, like, like I said, it's like, I think back then I was way too much focused on what people think and people people say you know because i really wanted to like i really want to make them so proud you know i really want to come out and say hey i'm the first one out of my region the first east german born fighter east german fighter in general in the uc gives it all you know comes out of such a small town still no mma gym up to date you know like still nothing is in this town you know like it's like you go in this town and you ask like 15 people about you see maybe five say i heard about it and two say actually i know about it you know it's like still it's different there, you know, and I was just too much into like what people think and stuff like this and it waited too much on me, you know, so and now, now that's like all of, you know, I really don't care what they say because at the end of the day, like we all agree, people forget so fast, you know, people forget so fast. They scream B on this one day and forgot that they screamed yesterday A, you know, like they just like, it's just like, sometimes it is what it is, you know, and you just go with the flow and um yeah 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 well it just sounds like you've picked up various lessons from your journey and i feel like i've heard that sentiment from certain fighters over the years like i've interviewed for instance ali al Kaisi a few times who was the first jordanian to fight in the ufc and that seemed to be like something that similar to your situation it's almost like it kind of like weighed on him more than it i guess benefited him in a certain way so yeah 100%. i feel like i've heard those sentiments before man and you mentioned fighting on a sean strickland card before that uriah hall versus sean strickland card that they had done i've also seen you've gotten in some training work with strickland from what i've seen based on some instagram photos and stuff like that what's it like getting to train with the former ufc middleweight champion yeah <laughs> it's fun I always call him Captain America. He's like, he's just like, he, he acts like a captain in the gym. You know, he's, he's a good guy. He's overall a very good guy. I think he plays kind of a role, you know, because he have to, because his career was kind of like on the sideways and then he made this boom, you know, and now he also became a champion. I have met him the first time in 2021. He was a bit different back then. He was more angry guy. You know, he was just like angry and he just wanted to hurt people and sparring. Uh, so you had to be careful if you're going to have rounds with him, you know, or you had an upcoming fight. 
Um, but now this whole training camp, he's like, he acted like a real team captain. You know, he's like, he's bringing in, he's like, he's elevating the energy. He's like saying, hey guys, listen, this energy is so high in this room. We need to working. We have fights coming up. We have Nicholas, we have Jordan, we have this guy, we have this guy, we have fights coming up. We need to help everyone, each other, you know? And I really, really like that. And um, for me, still like one of the best middleweights in the world. Um, had like tough rounds with him. Cool dude overall, bit controversial in some things he is saying. Um, but like like we agreed before, it's like I don't really care any like what anyone else is thinking about him. You know, my personal view of him is so good. He's such a good guy. He drove me home when I needed a lift. You know, he picked me up when I needed someone to pick me up. You know, he brought me shirts. He you know, asked for food from the PI. He brought me food from the PI. You know, like there's like nothing bad I can say about him. He's just overall a very good guy. Yeah, well, I love hearing that, man. And I guess like a couple kind of like things I wanted to kind of touch on too, because I mean, your last lightweight effort from what I saw was when you had fought Benoit St. Denis. Like, what are your thoughts on his fight with Hanato Moicano that's coming up? Mm. Tough, very tough. Moicano is very, very tough guy. Uh, incredible career going up from 145 up to 155, still cracking, still, he's like a veteran and he's been like knocked out, uh, not knocked out, but knocked down a lot. You know, he's like, he got hit it much, still going strong. Um, Funny dude as well. Like I saw, I saw some clips about Renato Mercano where I was like diehard laughing. And um, yeah, the fight with Benoit, but I think like Benoit has, he has something in him, you know, which makes him so dangerous. Like, you know, he's not the most technical guy. He's not the best wrestler, best striker. But I think he has this war, the spirit in him that he just keeps going, you know. I've cracked him several times in our fight. I cut him open. I cracked him with a good right hand after a counter. And he still kept going like a zombie, you know. And this is, that's like something you can't teach, you know. So I, I would probably think... Benoit will get like we'll get the finish like in round two or three, I guess. This is what I think. Yeah. And then with the bus in Paris, I think it's in Paris, right? The show. So yeah. yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have like all the fans behind him and he's such a good guy. Like I know that France loves him. The French people really love him and it's gonna be good for him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how he bounces back from that Dustin Poirier fight yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And he split it also teams and he has not his old team anymore. You know, he had like a coach for like long, 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 long time and he switched it all up. So I'm also interested to see how it goes. And for me, it's just better when he keeps winning, you know, like then have him in my record, have him in my resume, you know, fought him, you know, it would be just good to see him again on the top, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. I get what you're saying in that sense and something that I had kind of noticed too that I wasn't really privy to before setting up this interview. I noticed that you're part of that, you know, class action lawsuit with the UFC that's been going on with your tenure, obviously being from 2020 to 2022. So like, I guess, what are your thoughts on all of that? Like, I mean, you're probably squarely focused on the fight for sure, but just with, I guess that, you know, series of events that kind of unfolded where it seemed like there was a settlement initially and now they're revisiting it in October from what I understand. Like, I guess, what are your thoughts on all that there? I'm like, I spoke to my manager about it. Um, Like there was like a f the first lawsuit was like just till to 19 or to 18 or something. So it was not really including me, but there's something new coming now. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not too much sure about it. I really don't know much about it. You know, I, if for me, the most bullshit was like paying all this for in Texas in Nevada. It was where I was pissed off. I was not pissed off with how much the UC paid me because it was way more than all the other organizations paid me before. I was just pissed with the taxes, you know? So uh, one of the main reasons why I'm living now in Cyprus. So, um, yeah, I really don't know. I'm just so focused with everything else going on. And if I get like a message from my from my manager and he's saying, Hey, we won the lawsuit or someone won the lawsuit, you you're getting money, I would be gladly welcome to take it, you know. I but I'm I'm not sure. I'm not really focused on it and I really don't know much about it. 
yeah, no, fair enough. I mean, you're focused on what you're doing now, understandably so. And I just think it's cool that you had previously fought on Octagon 7. And it yes. seems like the promotion has grown so much since then. Yes. Obviously, you're growing in your career. So a lot of cool things happening in that regard. Yes, 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 yes. It was great. First German ever fighting for Octagon. You know, it was like cool. Introduced the German scene to Octagon. Um, it was a great fight back then. Great hospitality, like very cool show. It was in a tennis stadium, and since then they grow so much. You know, like um, yeah, it's cool. Like it's cool working with Octagon actually. Yeah, no, fair enough. It seems like they're doing awesome things, and I mean, it just Can seems you like do you're one work. favor. Can we uh stop for one second because I'm water loading and I need to go to the toilet. You know, people who have water loading, they probably will understand. <laughs> no worries at all, man. Yeah, do yeah. your thing. Thank you. I'm very excited to be talking to Nicholas Stoltz, he, an individual who's had multiple UFC fights and just, yeah, cool to see what he's been doing with Octagon MMA as of late. And yeah, definitely respect the grind, the water loading component. I mean, I'm an individual that doesn't even water load for fights and stuff like that. And I'm still, you know, frequently going to the washroom and everything like that, just trying to get in my normative daily water. So can only imagine what it's like for Nicholas, but very excited for his Octagon 60 fight going down on September the 7th. And Mateusz Kohut is an individual who, like I said, has that Muay Thai centric kind of approach. And yeah, should be a very engaging stand-up battle going on and just excited to see Nicholas back in the cut whenever he happens to get back. Going down very soon in Oberhausen. Very much appreciate so... Nicholas. Oh, hey, here we go. You're back. I was just letting the fans know about the fact we're talking during fight week and stuff like that, too. And just how much I appreciate you talking to me during fight week before everything goes down in Oberhausen. Yes, yes. So, 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 so. I'm back. But yeah, what I was going to say before, it just seems like you're very focused on this fight, but also like calling your shot and having like a I guess, broader vision of, I guess, what you're wanting to fall into place going forward. Because from what I've seen in interviews, you're really like concretely calling for that KO outcome in this fight, but then also eyeing that Frankfurt card that's going on on October 12th, if you get your ideal outcome here. Yes, that would be, that would be super cool. You know, we will see how it turns out. Like, uh, it's just like more of like that people actually, get the feeling of like, I really want that, you know, sometimes I think they, they don't know, like they, they think that I just don't give a fuck about anything, you know, because I'm saying it too much that I don't give a fuck, but I actually give a fuck, you know, it would be great to fight on a such great show, you know, but um, first of all, I need to go through the fight on Saturday and then we will see, you know, then it's, then we will see. Yeah, no, I hear you. Like you can't overlook the immediate task too much and you got to make sure. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's still like, he's dangerous. He's a good guy. He, he trained hard, you know, because this is what I kind of, I'm kind of do to the people in Octagon. Obviously, every time they're going to face me, they're going to face a UFC veteran. So they are like, oh, they're extra motivated, you know, like everyone is saying that every one of my opponents said in the interviews, they never trained so hard because this is the biggest fight they had, you know. So for me, it's like, this guy is going to probably train his fucking ass off, you know, to come at me. And so I will be, yeah, it would be just disrespectful and super, super idiotic to say, oh, no, 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 just finish him quick and then go to Frankfurt. It was more like if the perfect outcome is going to, and everything goes well, you know, and I have no bruises, no nothing, I'm calling for my shot in Frankfurt if there will be someone for me to fight, you know. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's just very telling of where your confidence and skill set is at fighting someone like this who has a victory over Regan Ursel in the Muay Thai space, and he's obviously done such great things with one championship. So, yeah, just I really think this is an exciting matchup and everything like that, man. Yes, it is great. It's very good. Um, I'm excited, um, and I'm very happy. Like We're going to finish off with like a good session tonight. And then it's all done and settled. Then we just gonna heat to Oberhausen tomorrow, 
and then fight this dude on Saturday. It's going to be good. Yeah. Yeah, no, love to hear that, man. And like I said, I appreciate you making some time to talk just days out from the fight and everything. And just, yeah, wanting to be mindful of what you're getting up to the rest of the day. I'm curious if maybe you had like a final thought you were wanting to add as we're kind of wrapping up here. I appreciate the time, Nicholas. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Thank you again. Um, thank you, Dylan. Um, so today is like, uh, we gonna we're going to do like a little a little run and then we're going to have like a, a pad session last one of pad sessions and we're going to go over to some drilling sessions in the grappling area and after that should be done for tonight uh we started watching uh the lord of the rings yesterday so we're going to watch lord of the rings part two today um gonna watch lord of the rings part three tomorrow probably gonna watch hobbit until the fight you know because well, i'm still like i'm in this law so i'm gonna just keep finishing it and um yeah that's it just just relaxing tonight and then pack, i packed already all my stuff and then just go and then just finish the last couple things tomorrow and then just heating out yeah yeah, well, it seems like you're in a good place, all things considered. And this Mataus cohort fight is going to be a great one. And yeah, just a I'm few days out. Good. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like it's just a couple more sleeps tomorrow. I'm going to see my girlfriend. Haven't seen her in five weeks, so it will be cool. Yeah, it's going to be good. Yeah, Octagon sixty looking like a great event. I always like talking yeah. to fighters on these cards. They're doing such great things lately, and just yeah, like I said, man, appreciate you making some time to chat today, and I'll be peeping the fight and. All the best until then. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much for having me. And thanks for a nice talk. And then hopefully we see each other again. Yeah, no, looking forward to it, man. We'll have to set up another one ahead of whenever the next fight may be. Yes, 100%.